Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lily, and welcome to my cozy little nook on the interwebs. I'm glad you're here. When you were leaving, I need you even more than I did before. You had the last word when you walked out the door. You drive me crazy, I want you to stay. So we're back with another episode of the Family Dynamics Challenge. And as you can see from the intro, Atlas and Nixon went on a date, but he left her by herself. No gotta go, see you later, nothing. He just was out. But he's been blowing her up with these cute little messages. And Atlas doesn't know how to feel about it. So in today's episode, we're going to try another date with Nixon. And we're going to see if we can squeeze one in with Drew. And we're going to see how each guy connects with Atlas. So before we get into the episode, I want to give you an update on Atlas and the family. Atlas is now captain of her eSport club, whoop whoop, and Carter is now an elder. Yes guys, he has aged up along with our boy Cyrus. I want Cyrus to go into music and I have no idea why I gave him this bookkeeping job. So what I'll do is I'm going to switch that to entertainer. And for Brutus, I swapped out his energetic trait for the couch potato. That way Atlas can keep up with him because this pup, he is wild. As for Aspen, our girl looking lovely as Eva, she is now celebrity chef. So she has maxed out her career and she is on her way of being elder. Guys, we have more birthdays. Atlas is aging up on Thursday. <laughs> I can't believe she's gonna be an adult and she has no husband. <laughs> So we have to really get going. So we'll get Atlas queued up to hang out with Nixon. Poor girl is crying because she is single and about to be an adult. Don't worry, Atlas, we'll find someone great for you. I promise. So it's later on in the day and they decided to meet up at the karaoke bar for some drinks. And it's happy hour, which is perfect. Atlas is gonna order herself a drink. Let's get her a coquito. That sounds so good. And Atlas is going to be blunt and ask Nixon about him ditching her at the bowling alley. I'm going to queue up some interactions, but if Nixon doesn't take the initiative to make conversation, we won't pursue him any further. If he leaves this date, it's going to be a wrap. So Atlas is going to say, so what happened at the bowling alley? Like, why did you leave me by myself like that? Nixon is going to say, my bad, something came up and I had to leave. I'm so sorry. Something so important you couldn't just say goodbye? Yeah, I don't know what you want me to say. Alice is going to say, I want you to say the truth. And Nixon is going to say, there are some things I just can't tell you. I thought we were doing all of this to get to know each other. Be flirted with, so he's flirting with her. Maybe this is his way of shifting their conversation to something else. All right, we're going to give this to him. I feel so bad for Atlas. I don't even think she has it in her to be mean, but I know that she is thinking that this isn't it for her. This is not the kind of person she wants to spend forever with. Well, this is getting awkward, so let's have them go sing karaoke in hopes of salvaging this mess of a date. And even though Atlas is goofing off and seems to be having fun, Nixon's response is weighing heavily on her mind. She's probably thinking to herself if she wants to really deal with his shadiness. Atlas grades came in, interrupted their karaoke session. 
but she still did awesome. I'm thinking that she's getting C's because she's not able to get to that class a second time around to do her exam and everything, but everything else is perfect, so we are good here. Bad news, Atlas was dismissed, kicked out. What? Is this because she's no longer a student? So Atlas has graduated. This sim has graduated, no more terms to attend. That is awesome, so she is finished school. So you know what that means, she can get a job. So we're gonna, after her date with Nixon, we're gonna have to do that. As I was saying, they aren't even a couple. And if he's acting like this now, what's gonna happen later on down the line? Atlas loves playing games, but not ones that play with her heart. He sounds horrible. That was pretty bad. Let's find out how she really feels about him now. All right, so she knows that he's a perfectionist, art lover, geek. She knows that he likes video gaming, the colors brown and purple. Oh, he's already a game developer at Rage Quit Productions. Okay, that's awesome. He's in the club, but this is what we really wanna know. They're lovebirds, best friends, perceived as basic looking. That's not important. Atlas sentiments about Nixon. First impression is crush, interesting sim, um, happy memories. And he thinks Atlas is an interesting sim. We need to do better here, Nixon. Yeah, and Atlas is singing by herself because of course, Nixon was nowhere to be found. But let's see, he just leaves all the time. So what are we gonna do with this? Tell me, do you guys think this is a breaker? So Atlas is catching up with Addie and she is telling her all about Nixon's shadiness. She wants to know what she should do and Addie hates to see her sister like this and gonna be straight up. She's gonna be like, look, I can't tell you what to do, sis, but if I were you, I would forget about him. When a man shows you who they are, believe them. And Addie's gonna bring up Drew. It's like, yo, what happened to Drew? You guys were hitting it off so well at the party. And Atlas knows her feelings for Drew have developed, but Nixon was her first crush, and I think she just wanted to give him a chance. And despite how great these whims are, I don't know if they really mean anything. And just like old times, Addie pulls Atlas on stage to sing one more song before they head out. Addie has really given Atlas a lot to think about. Will Atlas be ready to just be friends with Nixon? I guess we'll have to just wait and see. We're gonna take Atlas home. So guys, you gotta let me know. Is Nixon a zero or did he turn everything around and became a hero? I don't know what we are gonna do with him just leaving. Maybe it's nothing, maybe it's everything. But we're gonna try um, setting up a date with Drew Atlas is no longer in school, so she can now get her job and we can start working on the next part of this challenge. Since Carter is now a senior, we're gonna have him retire. He's worked long and hard, so we can have him retire. And guys, we have $74,000, so we can definitely afford it. The reason why is because Aspen had all of this money, $32,000 in the piggy bank. I just emptied it, so that way it's now in the family funds. Yeah, we know, that's your boy. <laughs> Even though it's Atlas' dog, we know Brutus is Carter's. So Atlas is up because she was starving, and she's eating whole wheat pancakes. One thing I love about that lifestyle that Aspen got, the healthy nut lifestyle, she makes healthy meals now, so everyone can enjoy them. And today, Atlas graduates, so her graduation starts at 10.03. So we're gonna get that taken care of, we're gonna get her her job, and then we're gonna go on a date with Drew. Here's Caleb and his little makeover. In the last episode, I didn't even tell you which aspiration I gave him. I gave him goal-oriented because it's teenage-related, hence him wearing the cap and gown. And this is his room, I did a little makeover. I took out the bunk bed and gave him a single, and he has these little posters. Um, he has his piggy bank, which now he has 500 bucks in. He still has his books, his magazines. He's like a bookworm, but I didn't give him the trait bookworm. He found these posters at the Spice Festival, and Atlas gave him this when he made honor roll. And also guys, I gave him a pen pal. So he's gonna be finding pen pals, he is a loner. He's cheerful, he's a loner, he's a happy toddler, he's relatable, innocent. And I added some of the new clutter kit stuff. I put all this here for her. 
She has a little planner. She has her Dirk Dreamer autograph. And I added these pictures of her brothers and sisters. And in her money bank, she has $2,450. I should have her take out 100 bucks for her drinks and dinner yesterday. That way it stays separate. Oh, and I forgot that it's winter time. You know how I do it. I always put winter to seven days, so <laughs> winter's almost over. Oh, and Carter has licensed his music. He dedicated a song to Aspen, and it's earning him $642 in royalties. The graduation ceremony is about to happen. Would you like to attend the ceremony? Yes. And then I'm gonna have to bring her parents and everyone to... It looks like all the students are gathering. At first I thought it glitched out. But it's happening. So it looks like the gang is all here and Aspen and Carter are running over here. I'm gonna have At um, Carter take a picture of Atlas. I'm just gonna warm this scene up because it looks so cold outside. Look how cute she is. She is so funny. If that's not Atlas, I don't know what is. She's like, the skies are the limit. I did it! Awesome, I'm so glad we got those pictures. I'm just gonna have him take a picture, just take a picture overall. Come on, Dayton, I'm trying to get my girls pictures for graduation. Just take photo. And this is what Carter got. <laughs> get some of her friends. Get her beautiful mom. Oh, she's just chatting with her friends and her mom and dad. She's so excited. I'm so proud of her. She did it, guys. Here goes nothing. <laughs> that was it. This is the worst spot to take pictures. You can never get a close up. Atlas is sending a happy text to Drew to see if he texts her back to go out. So we're going to see how this goes. She has finished graduation. I didn't get her her job yet because in case she had to go to work, I just wanted her to be home. Up, oh, here we go. I agree, Atlas. It's a great day. Let's go out and enjoy the day. Okay, so instead of Drew taking Atlas to the cafe, he decided to take her to go sledding. But being that it's a blizzard outside, they decided to chill in the onsen. It's much later now because the drive was so long, but it gave them the chance to talk. And Drew was able to explain why he had to jet off to college without being able to say a proper goodbye to Atlas. So here's Drew's story. He and his family are from El Salvadorada. Yes, he and Atlas are El Salvadoridian. I think that's what you say. Well, Atlas is half El Salvadoridian. Or is it El Salvadorian? I don't know. But they have that much in common. Drew's dad works in the civic planner branch as an urban surveyor and took on a job in San Myshuno. He uprooted his family in hopes that Drew would follow in his footsteps. You know, go to college, major in communications, and then get a job working with him. The company was paying their rent for the duration of the project, which they thought was going to be around three years. Well, it just so happened that the job was completed in a year and a half. So Drew's dad plans went to the wayside because back home, they don't pay much for what he does compared to Samarica. Drew didn't have the time to hear back from Foxbury, which is why he ended up going to Brychester. He already had a scholarship locked in, so he just jumped on it. But all of this stuff with the early completion of the project left them without a place to live in the city because we all know San Myshuno is expensive. And though his dad was making a lot of money on this project, it wouldn't be enough to sustain them. So they had to up and move to Brychester where Drew was heading off to college and his family and him are still living there. And just knowing that Drew felt comfortable enough with Atlas to share this with her is making her feel some type of way. Of course, in a good way. They're getting hungry so they're going to go find a place to grab something to eat because neither of them wants the night to end. Aren't those the best kind of dates where you just don't want the night to end? I love it for them. So they made it to the bar and grill and they already tore up some pita and hummus and Atlas took it upon herself to order some sweet and salty drinks for the both of them. Guys, I really want to dye her hair back to her natural color. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments section below. You see how good they are together? 
I'm not even queuing much up for them. They're doing this all on their own. I love that they're playful and joking around. And Drew really seems to be interested in what she's saying. They're talking about the snowstorm that's going on because Drew really wanted them to go sledding, but maybe they will have plenty of time for that. <laughs> Who knows, right? And Atlas is feeling very confident. I'm gonna have her go in for the bold pickup line. Do you guys see what I mean about how attentive he is to her? I don't know guys, I think I'm really liking Drew for her. You have to let me know what you guys think. Ooh, he accepted it. He is like, woo, chile. And Atlas loves it. Drew is probably telling her that he's looking for a committed relationship. And Atlas is going to take it upon herself to ask if he wants children. And he's mutual. He's all right with having a child or not. I wonder what Atlas' preference is. She's neutral. So this is cool. We can work with this. Atlas is going to ask him if he's a junk foodie or if he is a health nut. And Drew's like, I'm a health nut all the way. Atlas is going to say, nah, but my mom is. I'm a junk foodie. Drew asks if Atlas plans on moving out of her parents' house. And Atlas is honest with him and lets him know that since her parents are elders and are going to need her help around the house, that she doesn't plan on moving out. And Drew has so much respect for Atlas because most young adults are ready to live life on their own and explore the world. Seeing Drew's reaction makes Atlas feel so much love for him. And Atlas knowing that he went to college to make his father happy, she's going to ask him to pursue his dream job. Look at all of the love bouncing between these two. And Drew says, interesting idea, Atlas. I've been pondering what would give the most satisfaction in my work life. I'll let you know what I decide soon. So he's open to the idea and he didn't even get mad that she asked him to do that. This date is going well and I think she should go in for her first kiss. Yeah, let's do it. Here they go. Oh my goodness. He's like, that's all you needed to do, girl. Now you got me started. Let's ask him to be our boyfriend. We're going to ask him to be our boyfriend. I like Drew. I, I get good vibes. Yes, he said yes. This is so awesome. I love it. So guys, let me know what you think about Atlas and Drew becoming boyfriend and girlfriend i'm gonna wrap this episode up here thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and don't forget to drop me some love in the comment section below take care guys and i will see you in another video soon